Hey y'all, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws again, and welcome to the tenth video in my series on beginning programming in Monkey. Uh, all right, let's not waste any time here. You know why you're here. I know why you're here. Do you know why I'm here? Do I know why you're here? Uh, okay. What I'm doing in this video is I'm just gonna break down all the functions that come with the string object in Monkey. So I can go ahead and get rid of that. We're not going to be slicing in this one. And what we're going to want to do first is make this string a little longer. Make it hello monkey. Add a space in there. That space is important as you'll find out. Okay, and the first method I'm going to show you is the length method. And it's just like with the arrays. str dot or your variable, on the variable name dot. And all these are going to be variable name dot. Well, for the most part and length and this is just going to give you the, the length of the string and in this case it's well I can't count that high so I'm going to let monkey do it for us and it's 12 great and that's pretty straightforward nothing too hard about that right and so the next one I'm going to show you is the from care function and what this does is it takes the integer representation of a character and converts it to a string now with this, this is what's called a static function. And we're going to go over static functions later, a couple more videos from now. So what you can do when it's a static function, that means you can actually type the object type name. In this case, it's string, then dot, and then from care. And the reason it's static is because this function will work whether or not you have its it doesn't depend on being a variable if that makes sense so it's it's a function that, that it doesn't matter what data you have stored in, in a string or anything it all this function does is it takes an integer and converts it to a string and in this case I'm going so you can see that it works I'm going to convert the first the zeroth index well the first index in the string that we're using and this should print instead of the integer representation of capital H it's going to print the capital H okay now the next two I'm going to show you are the two upper and two lower functions or methods and I, th I think you can probably guess what these do is it's going to convert it to all uppercase here and this two lower is going to convert it to all lowercase I'm going to print those off there you go, all uppercase and all lowercase. Those come in handy with your string parsers. All of these do. These are great functions. And the next one is the trim method. And what trim does is it takes away any white space on both ends of the string. And by white space, I mean like space characters, uh, inline characters, or tab characters, anything that's not an actual character. It's, you know, white space. So in this case, we don't really have any white space on the ends of our string, so I'm just going to make a string literal with a bunch of spaces, and I'm going to say trim me, whoops, and then add some more spaces, and then use the dot, and not method, but dot trim, and that's going to trim the sides of this down, take all that white space out, so all that's left is trim me, and see, there it is, trim me. And it's important to note that with all of these methods is, like I said, these strings are read-only. So when you're calling to upper, what's happening is this to upper method is returning the string in all caps. It's not actually changing the string to be all caps. If you wanted to change the string to be in all caps, you'd have to do string str is assigned str to upper. And that'll actually overwrite the string with new data with the string in all upper case letters. So yeah, that's another thing that it's important to note. So, you know, tear your hair out trying to figure out why these strings aren't changing. Okay. Now the next couple of functions are very useful with strings, and they are the find function. It's how you search for a string within a string. So now I'm just going to print str dot find, and I'm, the word the string I'm going to look for is monkey. And what this is going to do is going to return the index of the first occurrence of the string you're looking for. So in this case, what we should get back is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We should get 6 back. So 
I will go ahead and run that and we got six look at that now there's another optional parameter with the find function that you can you can specify the index to start at so if I were to say start at seven which is starting here and then it's gonna look for the first instance of monkey and in this case chances are it's not gonna find it so what monkey does is it returns a negative one to, spec to signify that it hasn't found that string anywhere because it all all it was able to search was onke and alternatively you can also do find last which will find the last the index of the last occurrence of that string it'll start from the back of the string and go to the front so I can search for let's say O so there are two occurrences of O one at index 4 and the other at index 7 so what we should get back is the number 7 and if we look there it is 7 and if I were to specify an index with that it's the same thing it'll start at that index and go left so if I were to put 6 in there it's going to start at 6 and then check go this way for the last one so it should get 4 back there it is 4 and alternatively a couple alternatively a couple other ways to perform a search are the starts with and ends with methods and what these do is these actually return a boolean value and it's just like just like you would think it's just str dot starts with and you can put in something and I'll say hello and so this is gonna check if it starts with hello then do something otherwise do something else and so I'll say print starts with it and otherwise now we just we won't print anything so it starts with hello and I'll go ahead and go run into it and it starts with it and one thing you should note with these find and these start with methods starts with and ends with methods is they are case sensitive so if I were to change this to a lowercase h it's not gonna find it it's just gonna keep going on okay and I can throw an ends with in there just so you can see it but it's same idea just sees if the string ends with the string you're looking for and I'll put in onky onky and starts with it it doesn't actually start with it it ends with it but it was true so it printed that off and the last method to search in a string with is contains and this also returns a boolean value true or false whether based on whether or not the, the string contains the string you're looking for anywhere in it. So in this case, I'll just put in some random. It's not going to find that anywhere. So it's going to return false and it's not going to print. Starts with it. Now, the next method I'm going to show you is the compare method. And basically, what compare does is it will return a negative number if the string you're comparing it with is greater than. So I'm going to do hello monkey in all caps because cap in most programming languages capital letters are greater than lowercase when you compare these strings. So this should return a positive number. Now if I were to print str.compare in all lower this will return a negative number and then if it's the same it will return zero. And well, first I'm gonna get rid of all this other stuff. We don't need it anymore. So we should have positive number, negative number, and zero. And finally my two favorite string methods are the split and join methods. And what these do, well we'll start off with a split. What split does, it'll it's gonna split up your string into an array of strings and it's going to use an, uh, it's going to split based on a string that you provide so rather than me explain it horribly I'll go ahead and create an array of strings and we'll call it pieces and don't forget how to create an array use little brackets and you don't have to specify a size with this it's going to automatically designate the size of your array and so we're going to use pieces is assigned 
str dot split and then the string that you want to designate as the splitting string so in this case I'm going to use the space character so every time it sees a space in this string it's going to split it up take that chunk and add it to the pieces array so in this case there's only one occurrence of the space so it's going to take this hello stick it in the pieces stick it in an array put monkey in the next position in the array and then store that into pieces and then we can do a little if you haven't forgotten how to create an each in okay so we've written four and then I've specified that I've declared a local variable piece as a string each in pieces and it's going to take every string in pieces assign it to piece and then I'm going to print it off uh, print piece and close that off and run it we should have hello then monkey great now to join them back together you use the join method and the join method can be a little confusing but it's not too bad once you figure it out so how the join method works is you're actually gonna run it off of the string that you want to put in between the other strings in the array so in this case I want to put spaces in between again so you use a space literal and the dot join then the array of strings you want to join together using that space character so what this should print off is hello space monkey and there it is hello space monkey and that this completes our two part little series on strings I hope you learned something I hope this made a little bit of sense I, feel like I went kind of fast but you know it's a lot of information and I'm trying to get to more advanced fun stuff for you guys to do so if you have any questions if you need me to slow down email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or leave comments down below all right see you in the next one we're gonna do we're gonna work with some objects now woohoo I'm Jax